I'm using the Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy S8 Plus for the better part of like two and a half, three days. Not enough time for me to do a full review, which is coming. And if it's out when you watch this video, I'll, I'll link to it up here. But the more research I do on the phone, the more I realize there's a ton of incredible technology that goes way beyond the iOS versus Android debate. Just as a piece of tech, there's a lot of firsts or almost firsts that Samsung crammed into a really thin package. So when you buy a smartphone, you want something that's gonna last you 12, 24 months, be future-proof. And usually with that, you think of RAM, you think of processor, screen, and that kind of stuff. What you might not think about is data speeds. And that's not just reliant on the amount of bars you have or the amount of balls you got, depending on what OS you're using. Got a lot of balls. The Galaxy S8, I'm just gonna say Galaxy S8, but assume I'm talking about S8 and S8 Plus, are amongst the first phones in the world to pack two really unique and very different LTE technologies that are gonna net you just faster data speeds, at least eventually. Uh, the first one is LTEU, it stands for LTE Unlicensed. Essentially what carriers you'll be able to do is use the five gigahertz sort of spectrum that's reserved for Wi-Fi to put small cells in crowded areas to give you better network in really busy areas. So that's awesome. First phone that supported that, at least as of right now, T-Mobile is the first network that's turned some of those things on. And perhaps more paradigm shifting is actually going to be shipping with gigabit LTE capabilities. Now actually the S7, S7 Edge are the first phones that shipped with the four antennas necessary. You might've heard like four by four and MIMO, but they weren't turned on at launch. These are on and active uh, at launch, at least at T-Mobile. So I'm gonna try and not get that nerdy, but I've been doing a lot of research on this. I spoke to folks at Qualcomm to learn more about the technology. It's pretty awesome. So gigabit LTE, you're gonna theoretically get a thousand gigabits per second, really fast speeds. You're not really gonna get that theoretical number. You'll probably get around 200 to 300 uh, if the tower is active. But where I think this is really cool, it's essentially gonna be the backbone of what 5G is going to be. So it's gonna be simultaneously connected to 5G and gigabit LTE. So most of what you'll get when 5G is out is actually going to be the gigabit LTE that your phone, the Galaxy S8, already has and supports. And Bluetooth 5.0 is on this phone, and that might be a big paradigm shift for you guys as well. I know it's definitely kind of, I think it's gonna be a big one for me. So first, you get two simultaneous streams. So you and a buddy can both be listening to music, Bluetooth headphones, and control it separately, which is pretty awesome. You're gonna get four times the range of Bluetooth 4.2, so if you leave your phone and you walk far away, you'll be fine. You're also gonna get twice the data transfer speeds as well as 4.2, so you do a lot of data transfer via Bluetooth and pictures, you're gonna really appreciate what the Galaxy S8 has to offer. The screen on the Galaxy S8, Samsung's always had pretty awesome screens, but the S8 is unique for a few reasons. First, it goes to a thousand nits, which is a lot of nits, but what that's gonna mean for real world usage is in direct sunlight, it's gonna look really bright. You can actually see it when you're outside and that I've tested and it does look really good when the sun's hitting directly on it. Uh, also, mobile HDR. So if you stream a lot of Netflix shows or anything else that supports mobile HDR, uh, it looks, really incredible on the display. Keeping up with the nerd theme of this video, let's talk nanometer process size. Whether you get the Exynos 8895 or the Snapdragon 835 versions of the Galaxy S8, those things are tiny, 10 nanometers. So they are four nanometers smaller than what was already the smallest chipset out there. What that's gonna mean you're gonna get better performance, presumably better battery life in a smaller package, which means the phone can be this thin uh, and still give really awesome performance, which I'm still testing. So I'll attribute that to just spec sheet and a real world usage. Actually, when I do the review, I'll let you guys know. But there's a lot of really cool things about the Galaxy S8. I hope you can look at it, not depending on what OS you prefer, whether it's Android or iOS, but as a piece of technology. And as a piece of tech that's pushing the envelope forward, uh, Samsung did a lot of really cool things here and did a lot of things right. And a lot of things that make me excited uh, about the Galaxy S8 and really tech in general. So what do you guys think? What are you excited about? Any of these things you're like, hell yeah, I want gigabit LTE or what the hell is LTE you have never heard about it? Give the comments down below and let us know. And of course, give the video a thumbs up. It certainly helps. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Technobuff.